Hey guys, here's 10 things we wish we knew before moving to Bali. Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to be discussing 10 things we wish we knew before moving to Bali. So we've been living in Bali for almost six months now. When we first got here, there were a few hurdles we had to jump and a few things we didn't really know that we wish we did before we got here. Yes. <laughs> um, we wish someone had have told us these things. We watched a lot of YouTube videos before coming over, but we still feel like there was a few things missing um, that would have really made it easier when we got here. So we're gonna give you our 10 things we wish we knew before moving to Bali. Gojek's a really, really handy thing to know about. It's essentially Uber in Indonesia. You can use Gojek for just about anything. The probably most important thing you need it for, when you get off the plane, if you have Gojek on your phone already, you can order a Gojek right outside the terminal. It's just a little walk. And don't worry if you only have cash because you can pay with cash as well. They will ask you for credit card details when you sign up, but you don't need to give your credit card details. You can use all cash with Gojek and it's been a lifesaver. We use it every day. In fact, yeah. we caught a Gojek here today because it was raining. Yeah. <laughs> You can also get food delivered, shopping done for you. You really can use Gojek for just about anything. You need cash wherever you go. Of course, there's restaurants and places that accept credit card or debit card, um, but always have cash on you because you're gonna get stuck. If you're going out for a night, make sure you have plenty of cash to get home or to buy drinks or to pay your bill. Like I can't tell you the amount of times <laughs> we've been in a restaurant and racked up a bit of a bill only to find at the end of the night that they don't accept card. It's not like Australia where basically everywhere accepts card. Bring cash with you wherever you go. Uh, there's ATMs everywhere, so don't stress too much about it. I have a travel money card that I use so I can get Indonesian rupiah straight out from my bank account. If you don't have one, that's a good tip. But yeah, just make sure you have cash wherever you go. And small bills as well. They don't. They often don't have change, we find. So getting smaller bills, even going into the bank and breaking down. Even if you give 100,000 and the bill comes to 80,000, sometimes that throws them for a loop. So sometimes you'll have to have exact money or exact change. Uh, just something to keep in mind as well. Yeah, hold on to small bills. If yeah. You can. <laughs> We should know how to speak Indonesian a bit better. Most people do speak English here, which is really handy, but sometimes you'll go into areas that don't speak much English and it just really helps being able to communicate with people. So having Google Translate on hand is really, really handy. Yeah, and like we've used it, actually when we had to go to the doctor, it's really handy to have Google Translate because Sometimes you don't want things to get lost in translation. Yes. <laughs> um, when we were sick, we had to, uh, we tried to organize an ambulance to come and pick us up and we had to use Google Translate for the person at the front desk. Don't even have to download it onto your phone. You can just use it straight from Google. But if you have the app, it's really helpful. There is a rule when you come into Indonesia and you're planning on staying uh, an extended amount of time. If you plan on using a local SIM card, you're required to register your IMEI number at customs and pay any import taxes that are required. So this has to be done within two months of arrival, otherwise you will not be able to register your card. But don't worry because you can get a tourist SIM card, which is what they call it. And this will allow you to use your phone for about three months. You can use your phone as normal for three months, but after that three months, it will expire, which we found out the hard way. We didn't actually know that that's what it was. And our phones just stopped working one day. But you can go and get another tourist SIM card if you need. Just be warned that your phone number will change every time you get a new SIM card. But it's a relatively easy process. If you don't want to go down the 
road of registering your IMEI and paying the, all the fees and you're not sure how long you're going to be staying in Bali, just ask for a tourist SIM card at any of the local phone shops. We were pretty naive to dengue when we were coming over and unfortunately we got it within the first week of us arriving. If you've seen our previous videos, we've talked about this a little bit. Really make sure that you keep your immune system up. We recommend drinking Jammu juice. Uh, if you don't know what that is, definitely look it up. It's really good for keeping your immune system intact, which helps fight off dengue. If your immune system is low, it can really have a negative effect on you. Dengue comes from a certain mosquito. It doesn't come from all of them. Predominantly, they hang around stale water. So if you're near the rice paddies or anything like that, a higher chance of probably getting dengue fever. They're more likely to bite your ankles or your elbows we've learned, but make sure that you're using the right mosquito repellent. We were using a natural repellent and it just wasn't strong enough. The best ones to use are Sofel, or just go into the pharmacy and ask whoever's working what's the best one for you to use that they have on hand to protect you from dengue fever. Also, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you're covered for insurance. If something does go wrong, we use Safety Wing Insurance. We will leave the link in the description. If you're interested, it's super affordable and it's really good for digital nomads. Anything you can think of, you can get delivered. We had to renew our visas and we're in Ubud at the time and we trekked all the way into Denpasar to give our passports to the visa agent so that they could renew our visas. I didn't find out till later that we could have just paid them 50,000 rupiah to come and pick them up. And that goes for anything. If you need anything sent anywhere or picked up, um, it can all be done through the Gojek app or even if you're just buying something off somebody, they'll offer delivery and they'll figure out a way to get it to you. So. Everything can be delivered, don't worry. You don't have to go traveling miles and miles to pick up items or deliver items. So generally speaking, when you're giving a, given a price, um, there is some room for negotiation. This doesn't really count for places like restaurants or cafes or anything where there's like a set menu. But if you're buying anything from like a market or anything like that or a tour, generally everything is negotiable. They're going to give you the price which they know is the highest price they can probably get. And they understand that you're gonna come back to them with another price. Usually uh, if they offer you a price and you just say, no, I don't want it, they'll ask you how much do you want it for? In other words, like, they're expecting you to negotiate. Yeah. Um, so keep that in mind, but obviously things like when you're shopping at uh, big retail shops or restaurants or bars, don't go in and try and negotiate the price of a beer or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> So WhatsApp is widely used in Bali. It's the biggest communication tool here. Unlike in Australia and mostly in Canada, people use just Messenger through iPhone or text messaging. That's not the case here. WhatsApp is everything. We don't even really have credit on our phones to be able to use them regularly. We pretty much just use it for data um, with WhatsApp. So definitely get WhatsApp set up on your phone if you don't have it because it's a lifesaver. You can message pretty much any business through WhatsApp yep. to ask any questions, make reservations, anything like that. WhatsApp's the way to do it. Yeah, and if you're looking at booking anything before you come over here, just get their WhatsApp number because you can be booking hotels, uh, hire cars, tours, whatever it is. You could be um, communicating with them through WhatsApp before you even get to Bali. And even the big hotels and things like that, they're really good, like they respond to you within 24 hours. Whereas if you are just sending somebody an email, I feel like it gets lost a little bit in the inbox. Yeah, yeah. Number two is transfer wise. This is something I didn't really use back home, but just like WhatsApp, it's pretty much the main way people transfer money to each other and pay for either goods or services. So uh, if you're paying for anything like maybe a visa renewal or um, anything like a tour, booking a hotel, you can use transfer wise. We actually had a funny story where uh, we're on the beach in Seminyak and a lady <laughs> offered to sell us uh, some beads 
and we didn't actually have any cash on us because we were just sitting at a restaurant and we told her that and she said no worries you can just transfer us <laughs> and which, she got us there <laughs> which was surprising because <laughs> there's actually like really low fees and yeah it's probably the main way that our money changes hands here apart from cash obviously yeah uh transfer wise so make sure you download transfer wise before you get here and make an account super easy to use all you need is like an email address and it links up to your uh, credit card or debit card uh, so make sure you do that the water is quite harsh it's called hard water so you can't drink the water here it's quite harsh on your skin it dries out your skin it dries out your hair we didn't realize how negatively the water would affect us here and it does take a bit of time to get used to it so that's something to think about definitely stock up on quality hair care products if you're you know fair like me my hair actually started falling out so I highly recommend something like Olaplex or speaking to your hairstylist before coming over if you don't want your hair getting completely destroyed getting a good body moisturizer as well that's really hydrating really helps another thing that I will mention if you're planning on swimming in pools when you come in some pools the amount of chlorine is quite high in them so if you want to prevent your hair from turning green like mine did definitely wet your hair before you get into the pool so your hair doesn't absorb all the chlorine it was a nightmare and it costs money to get it fixed I know many other people have had this issue happen to them but that's the hack to make sure it doesn't happen to you so you can still enjoy the resort or the pool that you're at make sure you wet your hair before you get into the pool just as a bonus one last thing we wish we knew before we got here how good the local food is Yes. And how nice the local people are. Yeah. Don't be scared to go to local Warongs. I know we were scared at first. We didn't we heard like stories about barley belly and going to the markets. We we're actually told by a couple of locals not to eat at the markets because we'd get barley belly. But once we started venturing out we found that the food was really good. Mm -hmm. uh, we haven't had any issues being sick. I don't know, maybe we don't have sensitive stomachs, but I usually do so that's why I was very surprised and I was very very timid when we first got here about eating anything sort of that had been sitting out or anything but we eat Indonesian food probably 75% of the time now and I my sensitive stomach I've been fine so it really makes local people's day when you venture out from the expensive or Western restaurants just to even go in and try it one time really really makes them happy so. yeah so, some of the dishes do contain a lot of MSG and yeah. oil but you can find healthy options on the menu as well so yeah. don't be scared to try that we hope you guys have found this video helpful in some way if you have don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel check out some of our other videos Follow us on Instagram and we will see you guys in the next one. Bye. This one's for my scheme makers, my dream chasers trying to make it. Trust you got to hold on to faith and be patient. I know you're trying to get to the days of elation and all those obstacles in your